he said that carry out the transformations that would make the permanent revolution a reality in countries like Egypt and Tunisia. in Camden. She's been involved in the protest at Fortnum and Mason, so she's going to speak now. Hello. Um, I don't normally speak in a public body, so I'm a bit nervous. So I'd just like to quickly say hello to my mum. <laughs> and I'm one of the people that was arrested outside of Portland and Mason on the 26th of March. I suppose we could call ourselves the Portland 145, but it doesn't really have the same ring as the Birmingham 6, I have to say. Um, you can quite as a movement that uses civil disobedience as a tool to highlight that avoidance. Um, and I, I think marching is marching brilliant. I love going on big marches. I think it's really inspiring and I feel a really big sense of solidarity with other people on the marches. But civil disobedience is a really effective way to make the government stand up and listen. And that's why me, and I think I can speak on behalf of other UK activists, fully support the strike that happened on Thursday and any other strikes that happen in the future. is the way that large companies, well, usually multinational corporations, use loopholes in the law to save themselves millions and sometimes billions of pounds a year. So I just want to clarify that what these corporations are doing isn't actually illegal. They're not actually breaking the law. They're just completely devoid of any moral scruples whatsoever. We, we draw attention to this injustice and the way that the government chooses to allow this injustice to go on whilst using the deficit as an excuse to make devastating cuts to our, to our services. We try and do this in imaginative and creative ways. So UK and pop groups around the country have done things like set up crushes in banks, set up libraries in, in high street shops and stuff like that, and, and just generally used other highly visible, visible te techniques all over the country. And basically what this enables us to do is it just enables us to approach poor unsuspecting passers by on the street and engage them in conversations about the cuts, about the ideological motivations behind the cuts, but most importantly, that there is an alternative to these cuts. And that's to make the banks and the companies like Vodafone and Foods pay their taxes. <laughs> We've been very fortunate to, on the whole, have had spectacular media coverage from some quite surprising places, including the Daily Mail, are we? This has really helped put tax avoidance very much on the political agenda. Sadly, that's not what happened on the day that, that Fortnum and Masons were was occupied. We, we were painted in a really negative light. But anyway, I mean, I'm just going to explain what happened. I'm sure you already know. But we had a sit-in with Fortnum and Masons on the 26th of March. We wanted to do this in solidarity and to coincide with the TV's new TUC march, The Alternative. Partly to highlight the £10 million pounds that Fortnum and Masons avoid paying in tax every year, but also to highlight the fact that as a, that, that as a charity, they were investigated by the Charity Commission in 2009 for donating nearly a million pounds in the run-up to the general election to the Tory party. Personally, I found it quite difficult to not gorge on the really expensive chocolates because it's pretty good store, and I managed to resist. Can you clap now? Anyway, so having spent a few hours doing a peaceful sit-down occupation in the most luxurious exuberant shop I've ever been in, we were told by a senior police officer that we were going to be allowed to leave, that we'd been sensible and that we'd be free to go, and they were just detaining us because there was a breach of the peace outside and they didn't want us to be harmed by that. They lied. We were all cuffed, we were kept in cuffs for up to five hours, and eventually we were shipped out to police stations all over and around London. Personally, I was quite lucky because I was taken to a police station that was quite local to where I live, but some people ended up in places like Surrey and Essex. Eventually, we were after being held for nearly 24 hours, which is as long as they're allowed to help hold you without having to get special permission from, you know, in relation to the Terrorism Act, we were released. We had our clothes confiscated, we had our 
telephone, our mobile phones confiscated. Some of us have also had our purses confiscated and even turfed out into the street and expected to find our way home wearing paper suits and carrying whatever we had left over and shoot the first pass. And it's funny actually, because having walked down the street in Kilburn in a white suit with my stuff in a plastic bag, you'd be surprised there's a whole other sector of society <laughs> that suddenly you that relate to you. <laughs> <laughs> Proper, no, you know. the other day, five of the juvenile dependent defendants, and I believe that's all of them now, have now had their charges dropped, which is brilliant. <laughs> the rest of us are still facing charges, and the first group of defendants are due up in court tomorrow. This is political policing at its worst. It's a waste of our time, it's a waste of the court's time, and it's a waste of taxpayers' money. This is not what our already overstretched courts should be used for. The police have admitted that these arrests were at least partly an information gathering exercise, but they've also they've been used as an opportunity to intimidate us, to oppress us, and to crush the growing movement against these ideologically driven austerity measures. They want to silence us because they're scared, but we're not going to let them. the first of the football racing hearings are tomorrow at the, because the lovely Defend the Right to Protest campaign have organised have organized a rally outside the court. It's going to be at one o'clock and it's Westminster Magistrates Court on Horseberry Road. I really implore you to be there. The pressure, it's vital that the pressure is on to, to try and force the CPS to drop these charges because they affect all of us. Because when the police use these kinds of tactics to use their powers of arrest in this way, they are criminalising the rights of private protest. Anyway, I believe that you're all sitting on a leaflet about the demo tomorrow, so if you could just come, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Thank you.